Hello people, in this video we have to look at the treatment for aphakia, correct? So what and all we have seen so far, let us look at this. So basically aphakia is nothing but the lens, crystalline lens being absent in the eye, right? Or it can be absent from the exact location that is the pupillary area if it is absent, then that is called as aphakia. So what is here? The crystalline lens is absent, okay? So basically in this case there will be hypermetropia. Okay, so hypermetropia, one of the causes is aphakia. There is crystalline lens being absent. Now, what are the causes of this uh, aphakia? So aphakia can be caused because uh, congenitally it could be absent, surgically uh, the doctor might have removed it or there is some trauma and the lens matter got absorbed by the body or there is a trauma in such a way that the lens just is popped out. Posterior dislocation into the vitreous. So the um, lens itself dislocates posteriorly into the vitreous. Okay. So then we saw the optics of aphakic eye. That means uh, what and all uh, the person. This is not like that. This is a very high degree of hypermetropia guys. The eye power gets reduced from 60 diopter to 44 diopter. Anterior focal point and posterior focal points are increased. And accommodation is lost fully. Okay. So each of these words we have given the details in the previous videos. Everything has been explained very very detailedly in the previous videos. Anyways, um, then we looked at the clinical features, um, right? We saw the symptoms, what they come with and then we saw the signs, what we will elicit, right? We will see that uh, there could be a limbal or corneal scar if it is surgical, aphakia, anterior chamber will be deeper, right? Then what did we see? We saw that there could be iridodonesis, right? Then we saw that the pupil can be jet black. Their Purkinje images will show only two images instead of four. Then we saw fundus examination. There will be hypermetropic small disc and retinoscopy and autorefractometry. There will be high hypermetropia. So this much we have covered every line, every word has been covered in details in the, in detail in the previous video. Now let us move on to the treatment, right? So treatment basically what is the principle here you want to correct the refractive error so this is an error of refraction correct you remember in the slide we have already put right that it is in the errors of refraction so the principle here you are trying to correct the refractive error right then you will give this person what you will give this person a convex lens okay like a convex lens and you are making sure that he focuses it correctly so basically you are giving a convex lens of appropriate power so that the image is formed on the retina, right? So basic word you should write of convex lens you should give, okay? So you will give a convex lens, okay? Convex means what guys? It will have positive power, right? Positive, they will write it as positive, right? So let us say, how will you give this convex lens? Convex lens you can give as a spectacle, right? or contact lens or you can put an intraocular lens right like this one they will implant this intraocular lens into the eye or they can do something to the cornea so first let us look at spectacles spectacles is obviously the most commonly employed method especially in developing countries right to correct aphakia okay in the past they are saying they used to use this a lot so basically you can see plus 10 diopter cylindrical lens so is used for surgically induced astigmatism Surgically induced astigmatism, right? This is required to correct aphakia in previously emetropic patients. That means previously these people were totally fine, right? In such people to correct aphakia, right? They will use plus 10 diopter cylindrical lens. Plus 10 diopter with cylindrical lens, okay? So basically guys, the number of glasses, exact number of glasses will differ from individual to individual. That should be estimated by refraction in addition to this you can give a, a plus 3 pl uh, or a plus uh, 4 right an addition of plus 3 or uh, to plus 4 diopter is required for near vision to compensate the loss of accommodation okay so you may add plus 3 to plus 4 diopter for near vision to compensate 
loss of accommodation guys just if you are not understanding remember we have told exactly how much of power loss will be there in afk normal it is plus 60d and this person the power of the i will be reduced to plus 44d so they are giving around 10 okay so let's move on now to spectacles itself let's look at the disadvantage of spectacles uh, image will be magnified by 30% not so useful in unilateral aphakia so if they have aphakia only in one eye it will not be very useful it can produce diplopia that means double vision can be produced right so what did you see as a this advantage of spectacles so basically you can write off first thing cosmetically we don't like it <laughs> okay that is one of yes that is one of the disadvantage then you have it can produce diplopia right if the person has unilateral aphakia and then you are trying to correct it will cause a magnification of 30% okay so it will not be useful in unilateral aphakia problem of a uh, spherical and chromatic aberrations of thick lens what is this Pro problem of spherical and chromatic aberrations of thick lens basically because the lens is so thick the there is a failure of lens to focus all the colors to the same point okay so that is what chromatic aberration means okay then one more uh, still so many disadvantages are there guys you have to know, learn them the next one is field of vision is limited i guess this can go with almost all spectacles field of vision is limited then there is prismatic effect of thick glasses right what is this prismatic effect you can understand here that we are using a convex lens right so what they are thinking uh, telling is this convex lens can behave as two prisms like this okay a convex lens can be thought of as two uh, prisms that are cemented together at their base so basically what will happen when the person looks uh, at the center right if this is the lens if he looks here the vision will be different and if he looks through this there will be different vision that is all guys there will be some kind of uh, different things that he sees when he sees through exact the center and when he looks through the of the center okay then there are some other specific words you should know here roving ring scotoma guys pay attention here this is also called as jack in the box but he's out of the box in this right jack in the box phenomena look at this it will always so seem like he's not there he's there he's not there he's there right so the field of vision we already told you the field of vision will have a problem the object will seem like it will jump in and jump out jump out of the field like if a man is moving you will see oh he's moving he's not there he's a disappearing person right almost okay look at some youtube videos for that uh, with all the animation so basically this is jack in the box or what is it what is the other word here scotoma some scotoma what scotoma roving ring scotoma or jack in the box phenomena where will you see all this guys in aphakia jack in the box phenomena okay guys we are done with the spectacle part now let us move on to the contact lens part contact lens part should not be difficult so basically contact lens what are the advantages guys you know what contact lenses are right basically in afk your contact lenses are better over spectacles because the ma magnification of the image is less and you can eliminate aberrations prismatic effect uh, of thick glasses so no thick glasses here right and uh, and the field of vision will be wider and better this is cosmetically more acceptable also it is better you uh, suited for uniocular afk okay so that is about contact lenses what are the disadvantages of co contact lenses they are uh, they are having more cost right it is very difficult to wear especially in old age childhood and it irritates right and there will be corneal complications okay so that is about contact lens guys we are done with contact lenses also so next thing is what Inter intraocular lens implantation so shall we move on to this one intraocular lens implantation so you will take such a lens and implant it right so now let us talk about this one intraocular lens implantation it's the best available method for correcting aphakia interestingly they are saying it is the best available method right for correcting aphakia so it is uh, commonest uh, modality which is employed nowadays 
So you have two types here, primary intraocular lens and secondary intraocular lens. So basically primary intraocular lens is done during cataract surgery, right? And secondary intraocular lens is done in already aphakic patients, okay? So guys, this leads to a condition called as pseudo fakia. So it's a false lens, right? What will it lead to? It will lead to a condition called as pseudo fakia. So you are, uh, the person uh, has no natural lens. So you are putting an artificial lens. Artificial is no, nothing but pseudo. So pseudo fake, something like that. So kind of a false lens, right? So intraocular lens implantation is very common. Here you have primary, secondary, right? Primary is usually in cataract surgery, right? And this will be leading to a condition called as pseudo fakia right false lens so now after this false lens has been put so this is the eye so here one false lens they have put here okay now what and all can happen there can be emetropia consecutive myopia or consecutive hypermetropia so after the surgery that person can get m metropia right that means perfect the power of the intraocular lens implanted is exact Exactly whatever that person is lacking, he got it. That is M metropia. Okay. This is ideal situation, right? This people may need uh, glasses for near vision, they are saying. Okay. So, what and call can happen here? There can be M metropia. Okay. Or there can be consecutive myopia that is the inter um, the iol that is the intraocular lens iol it overcorrects the refraction so instead of you now having hypermetropia this guy got of myopia his overcorrected refraction or he can have consecutive hypermetropia that means he had hypermetropia he still has some hypermetropia that is when there is a under power iol in uh, given right so this is a under power IOL given to this person. This is a, in this case, you are giving him a perfect powered intraocular lens. In this one, you are giving over corrected, over corrected refraction. Okay. So this was about IOL. So if a person has had the surgery and he has pseudo fakia, how will he, you know? surgical scar you can see right so near the limbus you can see some surgical scar so if this is the eye and this is the limbus you can see some scar right anterior chamber slightly deeper than normal you will see mild iridodonesis that is the vibration of the iris right Perkinje test will show four images now okay because it's corrected right Pupil is blackish in color, but when light is thrown in pupillary area, shining reflexes are observed. You will see shining reflexes, okay? When you show light in the pupillary area, you will see shining reflex. Then IOL, you can confirm by slit lamp examination, okay? Then, as you have understood in these people, right, who have this intraocular lens, you can give a spectacle for near vision to correct some of these uh, refractive errors which have come. You can use LASIK <clears throat> or Advanced Surface Ablation ASA. So if the refractive error is large, then you can do an intraocular lens exchange or a piggyback IOL. So I am thinking they will exchange, they will remove the old lens and put some new lens. What do you think? So guys, we are done with IOL. What is IOL? Intraocular lens, right? Which will result in what? Pseudophakia. Now let us move on to the last part here. Refractive corneal surgery. So basically, refractive corneal surgery. So here you are using LASIK. So if you cannot put IOL, so where secondary IOL cannot be implanted, Hyperopic LASIK may be tried, okay? Hyperopic LASIK in cases where 
in cases where secondary IOL cannot be implanted. So guys, hope you have understood um, the treatment for aphakia. So there are four things. First of all, you will give convex lens, either it can be as a spectacle or contact lens or uh, you can do a <clears throat> intraocular lens implantation or you can do a refractive corneal surgery. Okay, so that completes uh, aphakia topic itself guys. So we have, we are done with this uh, huge, very important examination topic aphakia. So just take a quick recap and wind up this video, take a break, come back for the next video. Absence of crystalline lens from the pupillary area, it's, uh, uh, it can cause hypermetropia. The causes, congenital, surgical, absorption of lens matter, traumatic extrusion, posterior dislocation, optics, hypermetropia, total power of the eye is reduced, anterior focal point and posterior focal point are increased, accommodation lo is lost fully. Clinical features, you can see symptoms will be defective vision, erythropsia, synopsia, signs will be limbal corneal scar, anterior chamber will be deep, deeper, you can say iridodonesis, pupil is jet black, Purkinje images only two will be there, fundus examination will show a hypermetropic small disc, retinoscopy and uh, autorefractometry will show high hypermetropia. Treatment, we saw spectacles, um, but spectacles will lead to prismatic effect or roving ring scotoma or jack-in-the-box phenomena, contact lens, intraocular uh, lens implantation and refractive corneal surgery. That's all for now. Hope you have understood aphakia completely. That's all for now. Bye-bye.